buckle up. We're dunking into the NBA's funniest, most head-scratching bans from wacky wardrobe restrictions to shockingly banned items. Let's jump into the chaos. The 51% rule. Let's start with our first NBA fashion rule. And this one's all about footwear. We're zipping back to a time before 2018 when the NBA was a little less colorful and a lot more stringent about shoe hues. It was a time ruled by the infamous 51% rule, demanding that at least 51% of a player's shoe had to match the team's primary colors. Now, you might be thinking, they seriously police shoe colors? Well, indeed, they did. The NBA was like a strict high school principal, always watching for the slightest deviation from the dress code. It seems the sight of a neon green sneaker from a sea of team of red was just too scandalous to accept. During this time, Michael Jordan, the legend himself, was fined $5,000 per game for wearing his iconic black and red Air Jordans, which violated the 51% rule. The twist? Nike happily footed the bill, knowing the publicity was priceless. This bizarre ban didn't just cramp the player's style, but it also ruffled the feathers of sneaker designers. Imagine being told to limit your creativity to one, maybe two colors. But then in 2018, the rule was tossed out, making way for a rainbow of on-court expressions. And boy, did the floodgates open. From lime greens to flashy pinks, players' kicks became as unique as their gameplay. So the next time you see a pair of vibrant sneakers sprinting across your screen, remember, they're not just shoes, they're symbols of a colorful rebellion against the once black and white rule of the NBA. Ninja Style Headband Now let's rewind to 2019, a year when fashion collided with function in the most unexpected way in the NBA. There's a new trend on the horizon, and it's not high top sneakers or baggy shorts. Nah, uh it's the Ninja Style Headband. With players like Jimmy Butler, and Drew Holiday donning these headbands, the court started looking like a scene out of a martial arts movie. But hold on, the NBA wasn't ready to embrace their inner ninja just yet. Citing safety concerns, perhaps fearing a sudden influx of high kicks and nunchucks, the league pulled the plug on this budding trend. Yes, folks, the ninja-style headband was deemed too unsafe for the league. Picture the scene. The NBA, normally a battlefield for the best three-pointers and slam dunks, now grappling with the fashion emergency of ninja proportions. And our daring trendsetters, Butler and Holiday, well, they were forced to hang up their ninja dreams and return to a more mundane, safety-approved headgear. The NBA, where cutting-edge fashion meets safety scissors. Let's hope no one tries samurai top knots next. Upside down headband. If you thought these things couldn't get any more bizarre, well, we're about to spin this story upside down. We're diving into the upside down headband debacle. Yeah, you heard that right. Our friend Rajon Rondo, an ace on the court, decided one day to flip his headband upside down. Maybe he liked the look, or maybe he was rebelling against normalcy. Who knows? But the NBA, in its ever watchful glory, saw this act of fashion audacity and said, Nope, not on our watch. The league was quick to play fashion police, putting the kibosh on upside down headbands. You see, the NBA didn't fancy the idea of its logo being upside down. Seems like the league had an identity crisis. After all, they wouldn't want fans to think they were watching the NB, would they? So Rondo, a true point guard with an amazing ability to rack up triple doubles, was suddenly in the spotlight. Not for his stellar passes or his defensive prowess, but for flipping his headband. This is the NBA, where even the direction of your headband could spark a controversy. Now, tell me, where else could you find such drama, such spectacle, such headband shenanigans? The straw ban. If you thought the sweatband saga was a shocker, wait till you hear about the great straw ban of the NBA. Who would have thought that straws, yes, those ordinary plastic drinking straws, could end up on the NBA's banned list? We all know that basketball players need to stay hydrated during games, but the NBA drew a line at players chewing on straws. Sounds more like a rule for kindergartners, doesn't it? In 2010, while playing for the Dallas Mavericks, Karan Butler gained attention for his constant chewing of straws on the sideline. But the NBA, in their role as the party pooper, decided to take action. Citing safety concerns, they put the brakes on this straw chewing parade. Could they just have been worried about players doing a choke and dunk? Or maybe the NBA was just secretly championing the Save the Turtles campaign way before it was cool. 
who can say? Hair and nails rule. In another chapter of ridiculous rules, let your imagination take flight as you soar through the air, aiming for a slam dunk only to be halted by a surprising whistle. No, it's not a foul, it's the NBA's hair police. In this realm of basketball, the NBA holds sway over the length of your glorious locks. They've set a boundary. Your magnificent hair mustn't extend beyond the nameplate on the back of your jersey. Yes, bid farewell to any Rapunzel inspired moments on the court. But wait my friends, before you reach those clippers, let's rewind the tape. In the realm of the NBA, there existed players with nails that could give Edward Scissorhands a run for his money. Just picture the likes of Kawhi Leonard and Shaq, their long ass fingers adorned with nails that could double as lethal weapons. Recognizing the potential chaos lurking within those nails, the NBA had a stroke of brilliance. They implemented a rule to prevent these superhuman nails from wreaking havoc on the court. The aim? To preserve and protect opponents from unanticipated manicure accidents. So, rest assured, there will be no fingertip fouls or unexpected claw fights disrupting the game's rhythm. Ridiculous fines. There are some truly ridiculous rules and fines in the NBA, but have you heard about the most expensive fine in league history? Legend has it that in the year 2000, the Timberwolves found themselves entangled in a web of secrecy. Rumor has it that they made an under-the-table agreement with none other than the soon-to-be free agent Joe Smith. The audacity. Little did they know, the NBA's watchful eyes were always one step ahead. When the word of this secret agreement reached the league's higher-ups, they weren't about to let it slide. Oh no. In a move that left jaws dropping across the basketball world, the Timberwolves were hit with a monumental fine of a staggering $3.5 million. Did you know that in the amazing world of the NBA, players must not only show off their swag game, but they must also tiptoe around the rule book to avoid those pesky fines? Whether it's a flashy celebration, a mischievous gesture, or a questionable comment, the league has a majestic ability to catch players in the act. Take Meta World Peace, for instance, known for his vibrant personality. After nailing a game-winning shot, he couldn't contain his excitement and unleashed a bear hug on his teammate. Little did he know, the league had a strict no bear hug policy, resulting in a hefty $50,000 fine. Who knew love could be so expensive? Swaggy P, the master of swagger, pulled off a jaw-dropping move on December 16th, 2013. After nailing a game-winning shot, he let the excitement get the best of him. With a mischievous grin, he unleashed a celebratory shot into the ecstatic crowd. However, the NBA wasn't as thrilled as the fans. They swiftly fined him $25,000, reminding Swaggy P that gravity is not to be defined on the basketball court. Okay. Ah, the legendary Big Balls dance by none other than Sam Castle. When it comes to celebrating clutch shots, Castle took it to a whole new level. With his memorable moves, he boldly showcased his confidence, leaving fans in stitches and opponents scratching their heads. It was a dance that screamed, I've got the biggest, boldest basketballs around. Unfortunately, the NBA referees weren't quite ready for such an audacious display of bravado. They waved their fine flags, hitting Castle with a $10,000 penalty for his ball-centric theatrics. With each new bizarre rule the NBA invents, I can't help but wonder if they have a secret, ridiculous rule generator hidden in the commissioner Adam Silver's office. And who knows, maybe one day they'll unveil a rule that requires players to wear clown shoes or shoot free throws blindfolded. The possibilities are as endless as Chuck's appetite for donuts.